You're listening to my cousin D Lil's on. It's D Lil's you rocking with hip hop man home runs. We don't criticize pros man. It's all fun. Urban media, yeah, we talking sports, debating issues, spitting game on and off the court. It's hip hop and home runs. Hip hop and home runs. Dot com. Okay, we're back with another episode of Hip Hop and Home Runs. Um, Today on today's podcast, this is a quick bit. I just wanted to go over my top five NFL power rankings through the first four weeks of the NFL season. I think you guys will have uh, will be surprised about some of my uh, top five teams, and uh, we'll also go over who, in my opinion, who was picked up recently. Um, but let's start off with my top five power rankings. At number one, I have the Seattle Seahawks. Um, they continue to show their dominance Monday Night Football. Um, they get a tough win against the Washington Redskins. Now, you know, I'm a big Sherman fan. I love his bravado because he backs it up. I love players who can talk trash and and back it up as equally well. One thing that will continue to hurt the Seahawks throughout the season are these Deshaun Jackson type receivers. I knew that Deshaun was going to give these guys some, some problems. Despite the fact that he grew up with Richard Sherman, despite the fact that, um, you know, those guys have that foregone relationship, Pierre Garçon is a physical receiver. Okay, Des Bryant, physical receiver. Um, Megatron, physical. These big physical receivers play right in Sherman's hands. He's going to have no problem. But when you have these nimble, thin, small Fast, quick as lightning receivers like a Deshaun Jackson. Um, um, when you have these these small receivers, they're going to they're going to make plays against Sherman. He's anybody that he's not able to get a physical hand on at the line of scrimmage and disrupt their route, they're going to have problems with. And, and you're starting to see that now, um, and you'll see that moving forward. Uh, there's no one really in that division other than Tavon Austin, who I feel like would give the Seahawks problems. Um, Tavon's injured right now, so they're not even going to have to worry about him really. But it's going to the Darren Sproles; those type of receivers are going to really going to really give Seahawks problems moving forward. And number two, I have the Denver Broncos. They still remain um, a pretty legit favorite in the AFC. Um, yeah, Peyton threw a couple interceptions against the Cardinals, but the interceptions he threw were, you know, thing they weren't balls that I was worried about from a from a football standpoint. Um, I am a little bit concerned with Monte Ball's industry, Monte Ball, the the recent industry. Indi- I'm sorry, the recent in- injury that Monte Ball suffered against the Arizona Cardinals. Um, may put a, some additional strain and pressure on Peyton Manning to carry this offense um, when they were finding a nice little balance throughout the first few weeks. Um, defensively, they're starting to come around a little bit. All their guys are starting to get it together. Demarcus Ware and Von Miller are really starting to, starting to make things happen defensively on the field. So I look forward to seeing the Denver grow defensively and as an offensive unit, Again, it's just really about being precise, being sharp, being polished throughout the season so that when it's time for playoffs, they're able to win whatever matchup they have going against them. At number three, uh, we have the San Diego Chargers. I've liked everything I've seen out of San Diego thus far. Very physical, tough team. I think San Diego is the West Coast version of the Baltimore Ravens. And I say that being that Phillip Rivers, like Flacco, they can throw the deep ball very well. Um, they both have very strong dynamic arms, but, and they both have suffered, um, issues at running back throughout the season. So the responsibility for them to carry the offense relies primarily on their shoulders. The San Diego charges, however, defensively, they're just tenacious. Um, they know how to take away your weakness on the field. 
And overall, on both sides of the football, um, they're just a tough-nosed team and a team that can play with anybody else in the league. Right now, I don't, I bear, I give Denver the slight edge only because Peyton. But you know, down the road, we will see a Denver and Charger matchup. So, look forward to seeing that. Number four, I have the Philadelphia Eagles, and I really struggle with making this selection. Um, but. I have to give it to them right now. They're four and one, only losing to the uh, San Francisco 49ers. So at this point in the season, with their prolific offense, it hasn't really been slowed down at all. Um, if they can shore up things on the defensive side of the ball, they'll remain in the top five throughout the season. Nick Foles, I'm, I'm really don't believe in him, but I do believe in enough of the Chick Kelly Nick Foles relationship that. They'll be able to, you know, string enough wins together to, to possibly get into the wild card at this point. Um, but please be on the lookout for New York Giants and Dallas. Um, I believe that this division will go all the way to the last game, as it normally does. My last of the top five teams um, in my power rankings in, my, in the first four weeks of the league is going to be the Indianapolis Colts. The Indianapolis Colts, led by Andrew Luck, have lost a few games here and there. Um, but they've looked very dominant in their wins. And I feel like their losses were, quote-unquote, good losses, if you can have them. They lost to the Eagles, which obviously is a high-powered team on the road. Um, you know, that was a tough loss to take. So... They beat a, a tough Baltimore team, and they have Houston this week. And I'll be able to get a good um, assessment and, and make good judgments based off their performance against the Houston Texans this week. But at this point in the season, I have to say that Andrew Luck is is being viewed as a top four quarterback and has really put himself in the upper echelon. Um so, yeah, I fully expect him to be in the MVP discussion, and they're going to continue to battle it out um, for tops in the AFC with um, San Diego and Denver. 